Hi and welcome back to Divine Lee Design Studio. For those that don't know, my name's Nicole Reed, and today we are going to be making this cute little 10 minute project, 15 minute project of a, a lip balm holder that you can attach into your bag, hang it in your car, you can hang it off your keys wherever you want to. All right, so let's get started. our little uh, lip gloss holder that we're going to be able to clip either in our bag or on our key ring uh, basically you're going to need to go to your scrap basket if you don't have any scraps just grab a, a fat quarter and um, I've got two different sorts of baskets I've got an interfacing basket and I've also got a fabric basket like all of us and I chuck all my fat quarters that have been hacked to pieces in there so I've grabbed out some fabric for that um, and you want some interfacing now I use SF 101 it's a Pelham product I believe um, I just always call it SF 101 but I'll leave a link down below where you can get that now before anybody asks this is a very old fabric range and I actually have no idea what it is called um, or where I got it from for that matter um, I've had it for a long time and these are just the little bits that are left over so grab yourself some fabric and some interfacing you also want to grab yourself your general sewing supplies so you want a working sewing machine with matching thread for your project you want an iron and an ironing pad and you want to have your thread snips your rotary cutter rulers pinking shears a clapper if you've got one some wonder clips if you've got them if not we can use pins that's not a problem and for this project you're going to need a um, 13 millimeter uh, 18 millimeter you could probably get away with uh, just a lob lobster clasp or a swivel lobster clasp they're sometimes called mine is a 13 millimeter and you just need one of those and then you're going to need to cut a couple of pieces of fabric as you can see we only need three so you're going to cut your fabrics at the strip long strips at two and a half inches by eight inches and then your little piece here which is what our little clasp goes on to you want to cut that at two and a quarter by three inches now we will be cutting a little bit off that so that's why we've made it just that little bit longer to give us room for error and stuff like that all right so once you have got your fabrics chosen and you've got your interfacing what you want to do is you want to actually take your interfacing and on the wrong side of the fabric you want to put that down so just depending on what interfacing you're using just follow your manufacturer instructions instructions and basically get that on there and then we will be ready to move on to the next part Oh, and I forgot, the most important thing you need while you're sewing is your cuppa. All right. I'll just move that out of the way before that ends up being a catastrophe. <laughs> you're going to grab your iron and your ironing pad. You've already attached all of your interfacing onto that. And we're going to start with our little small piece. And we're just going to fold that in half. And you can finger press that bit. And then we're going to bring our raw edges into the center iron onto that and get that to hold and then i just place my clapper on there and then i'll bring the other one in now you don't want them overlapping but you do want them coming close to each other almost touching if we overlap them you're going to end up with a bit of bulk in the center and we don't want that and then we're just going to fold it back over on itself and again we're just going to put the iron onto that and at this point i just flick it over to make sure that it is actually all lining up properly and then i'll just put the clapper on that and hold that in place for some time and all that's going to do is make it super easy to sew it all right the next thing that we're going to do and you can see there it's just staying together it's just going to make it easier to handle over um, at the sewing machine you don't necessarily need this this is an optional extra the clapper but i will leave a link down below where you can get them um, they sometimes come stained sometimes they come in raw wood either way they're still a great product to have all right so all we're going to do now is we're going to top stitch now i've already got my sewing machine set up with a purple thread and we're going to top stitch down both sides and we're going to use about an eighth of an inch now hopefully you can see that um, I'll just move that out again I've just got a little piece of um, washi tape here that I can peel on and off but that for me is an eighth of an inch so I've measured from where my needle is to an eighth of an inch and then I've just lined that up and it makes it I've got a little tool and I'll just go grab it and I got this from the fat quarter shop it's so Emma okay and you can see it's got where your quarter inch mark is it's probably pretty hard to see on camera with the lights uh, about there I reckon 
we'll be able to do it. But then you can see I've got all these other marks so I can line it up. So I put the needle in the down position and then that is basically going to sit there and then I just line up my washi tape with it and I can remove that when I don't need it again but I tend to have that on there all the time because I do a lot of um, top stitch and I will leave a link down below where you can actually get that it just makes it super easy it's marked on there that usually just sits in my drawer beside my sewing machine station and um, I use it all the time for all different widths of my seam allowance so I like to start with the needle in the down position when I'm working with something small and I start off nice and slow and then I'm just going to top stitch that down until I get down to the end and then I'll spin that around and I'll do that again and again just starting off nice and slow all right we can take that out of the machine now get rid of all our extra threads all right the next thing that we're going to do is we're just going to take our little swivel hook and we're just going to place that on then I'm just going to put a wonder clip on there and you can see that that's on there nicely just leave that aside for a moment we're going to take uh, one of our long pieces and we're going to fold that in half and we're just going to find that center point up the top and then what we'll do is we will take our little piece that we just made pick your pretty side that you want to have on there and then we're just going to center that just like so and i'm going about half an inch past that uh, end of that fabric and then all i'm going to do is i'm just going to pop a wonder clip on there so i can just um, take it to the machine but all I'm going to do is I'm going to use an eighth of an inch seam allowance again and I'm just going to tack that into place and that's going to make it easy when we place these on top of one another all right so let's head to the machine and do that and just double check that it is centered when you get there because sometimes it can move and then place that under and using an eighth of an inch starting with the needle in the down position it's a little bit kinder to your machine when you're going through so much bulk and nice and slow we're just tacking that down and then I'll reverse at the beginning at, at the end. I don't necessarily do it at the beginning because it is just a tack. All right, so we can get rid of our long threads now. So now that that's in place, all we're going to do is we're going to take our other strip and we're going to place them right sides together. And I am just going to grab some wonder clips and I'm going to clip it all into place and making sure that all my raw edges are lining up and then we're going to use a quarter inch seam allowance and we're going to sew all the way around but we do want to leave a gap so just mark with either pins or a friction pen or chalk or something like that we're going to leave a gap on one side okay that's about an inch and a half to two inches is all we're going to leave now what we're going to do is we're going to start here and we are going to back stitch at the beginning go all the way around until we get back around to this point and back stitch there and the reason we back stitch is to give it extra security so when we turn it out it doesn't pull apart starting with the needle in the down position and off we go all right when we turn here we turn with the needle in the down position we're going to maintain our quarter inch now we don't have to worry about holding this little tab that we've got here because we tack that in place and it's not going to move on us so as we're coming to it we just want to take it nice and slow slow your machine down and come into that thickness nice and slow and you don't need to reverse or anything like that you can just cruise along and get over that hump and then we're good to go all right we'll turn and then go all the way around and as you come up to the end we just want to back stitch all right so we've now sewn that all the way around next what we want to do is we want to grab our pinking shears and we're going to take a little bit of the bulk out now i will say when we get up to the top up here it is going to be difficult to get through that so you may not be able to go through that with your pinking shears so you may have to just trim that off with your normal scissors or your rotary cutter you don't want to um, strain yourself so you can see there mine aren't going to go through that so i'm just going to use my rotary cutter get rid of that bulk and then just take a little bit off each of those corners you can see there i haven't tried to go through that there's no point in trying to get through something and possibly straining your hand and then when i've got a you can see here i've come up to my little um, mark i just go up to there with the pinking shears and then i just get my little thread snips and i cut that away and to do the other side i just flip it over and then i just stop where my stitching stops 
So basically what this is going to do is it is going to give us some nice corners to work with when we poke them out and it'll look really, um, it won't get a rounded corner, it'll look like it's a nice sharp corner. Next what we're going to do is we're just going to reach in with our index finger into a corner and then pinch it with our thumb and push that out. And then the other end is super easy because we've got something to grab hold of in there. We just grab our little um, key ring holder, the lobster class, sorry, and we just pull that out. And you want to still be gentle, you don't want to be too rough, okay, and that's pulled out. Then we'll just get our poking device, whether that's a chopstick, or in this case I've got a um, Alex Anderson um, tool that's got a quick unpick in it, it's got a tailor's awl, it's got a hand presser, and a poking device. So it's four tools in one. I forgot I had it for ages and then I found it not too long ago, so I've put it in to, to use it. And I think I got it from the Fat Quarter Shop. And occasionally <laughs> I, I hold, hold, hold on to the, the lid of it <laughs> and uh, yeah, I pull it off in there. But you can see I've got a nice point there that I can just point that out and it just gets those corners out really really well you can use a chopstick as well and my other favorite tool is a a fabric uh, a paper creaser for scrapbooking and that usually helps me get out all of my um seams it like rolls them and it makes it easier to press everything easier for my openings and it's dull as well all right so we now have a little tube here and we've still got our opening so we're going to get our iron and we're just going to press our little opening in place now we've reversed um, stitched at the opening so that's going to make it nice and easy for us to keep this closed just one tip I have if you find that your seam is not sitting properly just roll it between your fingers and that will get it to settle down a little bit and then you'll be able to um, have that all nice and um, flat and turned in nicely okay so now that we've done that we're just going to bring this up and we're just going to measure because we, when it goes in we don't want it to be super tight in there we want it to be able to just sit in there nicely okay so that's looking like I'm coming down about three quarters of an inch but you need to just measure that yeah three quarters of an inch so just measure that for your um particular lip gloss that you're using or your lip balm that you're using see that's going to go in there quite nicely and I can still get my fingers in there to grab it so I could probably bring that up just a touch more all right so come down about three quarters of an inch that's looking like a really good size and then all we're going to do is we're going to get our wonder clips and we're going to clip everything into place so when we top stitch this we are going to go all the way around and what will happen is our little opening here will close up and we don't have to worry about hand sewing that. So it makes it a super quick little project. All right, so at this stage, I do like to just measure and make sure that I'm at the right measurement that I want, which is three quarters of an inch and it is going nice and straight. And to do that, I just line it up on one side and this side over here can come up just a touch and then that will be nice and straight. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to start here and we are not going to reverse back stitch at the beginning we're just going to start here and we're going to go all the way around and when we come back to here we'll back stitch then all right so at this point you're going to be going through a lot of layers so you want to lengthen your stitch length up to about a three millimeter and we're going to use an eighth of an inch seam allowance and we as i said we are not going to back stitch at the beginning we'll do that at the end and it just gives us a nicer finish on the back because you will actually see that and uh starting with the needle in the down position we start off and if you're having any problems getting it through your machine at the when you're turning just get your tailors all and give it a bit of a helping hand okay so we're coming up to where we're going over our little um where we're making our little pouch. What you wanna do here, and I like to do this, especially when I make anything for my girls, is I just, cause they're rough, I just do a little back stitch there. Now mine has an automatic back stitch and it does three stitches. And then I'll just stitch over that again and then continue on. 
and that's just going to give it a little bit of extra security for when you're pulling it in and out all through. right so once you have sewn top stitch that all around you want to take off all of your threads and get rid of those then grab your lip balm and pop it in and then your little holder is ready to go all right so that's our little pouch today for our lip gloss or lip balm thank you so much for joining me if you like this video today don't forget to give it a thumbs up and also if you're new here and you've yet to subscribe make sure you hit that subscribe button and the little bell icon beside it and then that way you're not going to miss out on any future posts and that's it from me this week have a great day everybody and i'll see you all again next time bye for now